Hi, my name is Greg and welcome to the first video in a series of training videos based around creating a micro niche website. These websites can bring in a little extra income on the side or eventual freedom from the 9 to 5. The first video is all about keyword research, so let's get started. Okay, your keyword is the basis of your entire website. This is what your whole site will be about. You may get lucky and already have an idea, but I assume most of you won't. And even if you do, you need to dig a little bit deeper to make sure that it's a viable option. But what if you don't have an idea, as is the case with most people watching this video right now? Well, I'm here to help. The best place to start is thinking about your current interests. Do you like woodworking? Do you really love snowboarding? It could even be something as simple as sewing. But just because you're interested in something does not necessarily mean that it will be a good idea to base a website around. The World Wide Web is a huge marketplace. There are 2.4 billion internet users worldwide and 245 million in the United States alone. That's a pretty big market. But there is also a lot of competition. But with the market that huge, there is always plenty of room for another provider. You just need to target a small enough group. This is where the micro niche website comes in. You need to microtize your idea to get more specific. You do not need to target the entire snowboarding market as your audience, for example, but just a small part of it. Let me explain. Let's say, for example, you are interested in astronomy. Now that's a great topic, but you have some pretty big competition if you want to compete in that market. You need to think smaller. So let's niche it down to just stargazing, but even that's pretty broad. How about just telescopes, or even better yet, telescopes for kids? You now have a great micro niche keyword that you may be able to build an entire website around. Now the best way to get found on the internet is being listed in a search engine like Google, Yahoo, Bing, etc. We want your site to be listed when someone searches for a specific phrase. And since Google is the largest search engine, we will use the tools they provide to do a little bit more digging. So using this example, let's do a little bit more research to see if it has the potential to attract enough attention to make it into an online business. Okay, let's get started by heading over to the micronicheblueprint.com website and clicking on tools in the menu. You can also get here directly by going to micronicheblueprint.com slash tools. We will scroll down to the keyword research section and click on the Google keyword tool. Now it, it may ask you to log in and if you don't have one already I would suggest creating a Gmail account as you will be using it for various steps throughout the process of creating the website. Once we get into the keyword tool you will want to click on the keyword ideas tab and move over and make sure that only exact is selected under match types. We will then type in our keyword and, and click on search. You will now be presented with a whole list of data. Let's quickly run through what each column means. The keyword with the brackets around it is an exact match keyword. Now this is something that someone actually typed into Google and searched for. Since we checked only the exact match type earlier, they should all have these brackets. The next column is competition. Now this is not exactly what you may think. This is not competition for you, it's actually competition for advertisers, since this is a primary purpose of this tool. So a high competition actually means that there are many companies competing for ad space using that keyword, which means that people are paying to have ads displayed when this is searched, which in turn means you have a greater chance at making money using this keyword. The global monthly searches column is exactly what it sounds like. It's how often, on average, in a given month, this keyword is searched for. The local monthly searches column is similar to the global one, except it's the number of searches in a given location, in our case, the United States. The final column that is shown here is approximate CPC, or cost per click. Again, since this tool is mainly used by advertisers, this is the estimated cost that they will be charged when someone clicks on their ad. Now, whether you plan to use Google AdWords as a revenue source on your website is up to you. But either way, a higher number here means people will pay more for ads matching that keyword, which means the keyword is a good one to use to base your website around. With all of that being said, we do have some criteria that we want our keyword to pass before we move forward in the process of creating a website. Let's go up to Advanced Options and Filters and add a few filters that will show us the best results. Let's make the Local Monthly Searches filter greater than 500 and add another filter and select approximate CPC 
and make that greater than 40 cents. This will get rid of the worst keywords and give us a better list to look at. As you can see, our Telescopes for Kids keyword passes these tests. If you look at the other keywords on this list, you'll see some large numbers for telescope and telescopes. But a large number here usually means there's also huge competition. With these numbers, I like the Telescopes for Kids keyword and I'm ready to move on to the next test. Okay, now let's go over to Google and search this keyword just to see what results we get. Here you can see the featured results, or ads, listed on the top of the page. The results below that, and even a shop on Google image board on the right side. For this last test, you will need to install Firefox browser and two add-ons to access the information we are about to see. Head over to micronicheblueprint.com slash tools for links and instructions on how to get these free tools. Okay, if you have these add-ons installed, we can go ahead and turn them on. We will then search again and we'll be given some extra information regarding these search results. Two extra lines of info will pop up under each search result, but while these list a ton of numbers, don't get overwhelmed as we're only looking at two in particular. First, let's look at the top line labeled SEO Quake. The only number we're interested in here for now is the PR or page rank. This is kind of the score that Google gives the website and a higher number means it will be harder to beat the search results with your own website. In this list what we are looking for are zeros, ones, and NAs. On this first page we will want to make sure there is more than one with a page rank of NA, zero, or one. This indicates that the listed website may be easily overcome by your own in the rankings and since our goal here is to get ranked in the first page of Google that would be great. On the second line of data, we are looking at the backlinks number, which is followed up by the LKS. Backlinks are the number of pages that link to this page. The higher the number, the better the results. So we are looking for low numbers here. What we are looking for here are three results with less than 15 backlinks. This would also show that one of these sites could be overtaken with your site that you are about to create. And the last thing we'll look at is if your keyword is in the actual URL of the page. On this first page of Google, we want there to be at least three without the actual keyword in the URL. So scrolling through the list here, it seems that keyword telescopes for kid passes the test and has the potential to be listed on the first page of Google. Now that's very important as 90% or more of search traffic comes from this first page of a search engine. Most people will not continue on to page two Instead, they will just search using different keywords if they don't find what they are looking for. So remember, the keyword you choose becomes the basis of your entire website, so be sure to do your research to make sure the idea is viable before moving on. If you're having trouble thinking of an idea, just think about your current interests. What do you do in your spare time? What makes you unique? What advice or help do others seek from you? Now when you get that first idea, then microtize it. Make it specific so that you can become the go-to website for people looking for information on your specific topic. That's all for this video, and you can view the entire series for free at micronicheblueprint.com. Thanks for watching.